think I first decided on a career in science during my PhD, but up until that period I didn't really know what a career in science looked like. So I did my PhD because I was really enjoying research at the time, I was really interested in the topic, but I didn't necessarily know what a scientist does until that moment and until that experience. A career in toxicology interested me because it merged two areas that I've always been interested in. One being that of pollution and the impact human activity is having on the world around us. And the other being in medicine and, and sort of medical type research. So toxicology for me, especially as an environmental toxicologist, merges those two areas together. I'm also interested in, in how the world around us affects us from a molecular level all the way up to an organism level um, and toxicology allows you to do that. It's looking at the world around us which is changing, it's dynamic, we're changing it by releasing chemicals or by affecting air quality and the toxicology is letting us ask questions about what that's doing to human health. I think a good researcher would be resilient because lots of things can go wrong, things don't work in the lab, it's very competitive, so you've definitely got to have resilience and with that in mind you also need to be quite motivated and driven and curious. So my area of work and I think toxicology in general is quite multidisciplinary, it can integrate physics, chemistry, biology, environmental sciences, different technologies and I think as a scientist and as an academic, I've got this drive to learn. I like learning new things, I like discovering. For me, I work on microplastics. They are a mixture. You have the physical plastic particle, but you've also got plastic chemicals as well. And so in the lab, through toxicology, we're able to ask very controlled questions about what's driving the effect. We can look at each in isolation, and we can look at the biological mechanisms behind the effect we see as well. It's likely that microplastics have been around since mass production began because whilst we originally thought that they formed through the degradation of litter in the environment, we now also know that there's much more immediate processes which generate them like the wear and tear of a carpet, opening a plastic bottle, the lid shedding microplastics, driving synthetic tyres and washing synthetic clothes. These all also generate microplastics. So, those processes haven't changed since the 50s. So it's quite likely that since the 50s we have been exposed to it. But in order to make those like population level linkages and, and sort of links to health, you have to be looking for that specific exposure to begin with. And we haven't up until now even considered it because it's only in the last few years we really realised we were exposed to it. So it might be that, you know, some of the health outcomes that we are aware of in the Western world that have sort of risen over the last 50 years might be connected to plastic usage or exposure to plastic particles or chemicals. It's just only now that we're starting to look at the particle exposure to make those links.